Good evening, everyone, and thanks again for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Dave Percy, and I'll be hosting tonight's show. Up first, uh, hazardous weather graphics. There are no uh, advisories, watches, or warnings out anywhere in the state, so it's going to be a perfect weekend coming up, uh, at least in that regard. Otherwise, uh, moving on to the next graphic here, and there's practically nothing on it as well, the fire danger chart, but uh, still a couple of uh, very high areas I noted in the same locations as yesterday. An additional one up here in the uh, Tanana Valley, uh, that's in this uh, fire dangers for grass, uh, which is obviously uh, dries out pretty quickly, and so this is uh, for the unsnow covered grass, uh, obviously, as well. There, it's still in a very high danger, but we've really lost the winds in the Manuska Valley from a couple of days ago when it was probably even more elevated than that. Anyway, moving on to satellite imagery, you can see one band of clouds here kind of dissipating as it pulls up to the northwest, but extending all the way down along the Alaska Peninsula. A few isolated showers there maybe up uh, along the uh, southeast slopes of the Aleutian Range, Shelikov Strait. I uh, didn't say anything in the reports uh, across the Kenai Peninsula or even into the interior here. And then more moisture coming up from the south and southeast there into the Panhandle, actually a low pressure area here southwest of the Queen Charlotte's. And uh, weak front right through this location here, just now spreading some more rain into, across Dixon Entrance uh, towards uh, Metlakatla and uh, Heidelberg, and uh, again, really not too well defined here, and so it's not much of a very strong frontal boundary. There is a uh, little breezy conditions, uh, 15, 25 mile an hour wind gusts uh, in some areas. Rainfall not all that heavy either today. Usually, uh, uh, most locations around a tenth of an inch or less. There were a couple of uh, spot locations had a little bit uh, heavier amounts on the rainfall. And then uh, strongest wind gust down there was Cape Spencer. Actually, let me get out of the way. Cape Spencer with 46 mile an hour gusts this afternoon. Otherwise, uh, mostly clear here or variably cloudy. South central Alaska, sunshine in the interior. And actually, uh, sunshine extending all the way off the coast again. And then we've got some clouds up there off the western Arctic coast. But the uh, flurries are occurring on the east side. And that not very widespread. And uh, of course, uh, pretty... Uh, scattered nature even over there and generally cloudy skies over the Bering Sea. Some gusty winds out here <clears throat> up to about uh, 25 miles an hour at Nome out of the northeast and uh, again you can see clouds dropping southward in that northerly flow there coming onto the coastline and otherwise down over the Aleutians we've got uh, this persistent once was a frontal boundary and now just uh, Leftover moisture sort of lost its way and became stationary out here from the central Aleutians back on up uh, toward Kamchatka Peninsula. And most of the shower activity, which uh, isn't much, is mostly north of the uh, both at Adak and Chimia areas. And on the chart today, northeast winds again uh, cleared skies out along the coast and beyond. But by the time uh, enough overwater trajectory there that a few isolated showers developed around the Perbloss with cloudy skies there, uh, possibly on the north shores of the eastern Aleutian areas, Unamaka and Unalaska Islands. But again, whatever fell is light. And then most of this moisture through here is also pretty scattered and light, kind of a drizzly, rainy, cloudy pattern with light winds. Uh, Adak Atka, mostly north, back up, uh, and it is north of Shimia. Otherwise, uh, some fog there at Wainwright this afternoon and a few isolated flurries and fog in the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Mostly sunny over the interior. Uh, still some gusty winds over the central interior locations. Indian Mountain, for example, had a gust to 40 miles an hour. Nome, as I mentioned, 25 miles an hour. And Point Lay at about 35 miles an hour out of the northeast. Otherwise, uh, light winds down across the south here with... Uh, Sunshine down uh, the Cuscombe River Valley right out to the delta there in Bethel. And then some isolated showers here with this band of clouds extending up to the northeast there. Uh, were some snow showers going on over around uh, Destruction Bay, but it didn't seem like much of that was getting west of the border. And then we've got this uh, first system, this weakening trough, uh, brought some rain. So it's kind of a, uh, just a cloudy, light rain, drizzly type of showery day there for the southeast coast with, again, 
pretty light rain amounts. Next system here actually would be more of a wind than rain producer, and the winds won't be all that strong. We can see a fairly tight gradient associated with that. And we'll see for tonight, uh, first front slides right up to the northeast there, so it'll be a pretty good uh, breeze along the southeast coast with periods of rain tending to taper off, but a lot of moisture caught up in that southeast flow, so it'll become a little more intermittent showery once the front goes through, but it probably won't end completely. It'll be a few breaks there along the south coast. Another front developing here, now be uh, pushing northeast where the wave down there to the south developing. Otherwise, don't look for a lot of change in the interior. Just look for increasing moisture as this front comes up. That could push a band of snow across uh, the Chugach Mountains into the northern Cook Inlet area, possibly up into uh, Palmer Eagle River, maybe a uh, chance of light snow coming in uh, during the overnight hours tonight into maybe early tomorrow morning. Otherwise, back to the west, mostly clear and uh, Breezy conditions, not too strong though actually, in the 10 to 20 mile per hour range. Strongest winds will be up here along this, uh, along the Brooks Range out to the western Arctic coast, Point Hope to Cape Lisbon. Again, could see gusts uh, 30 to 35 miles an hour through the passes of the western Brooks Range. Otherwise, out over the Bering Sea, no storminess at all. We still have this very weak trough out here and that's about it. Isolated rain and snow showers, or scattered snow showers coming onto the north shore of the islands here, but uh, tending to push south of Adak and Atka now and then back up across Shimia. Just a lot of clouds, maybe some areas of low, uh, low, low, low clouds, areas of fog out here over the Bering Sea, and still mostly clear along the Yukon Delta, Nunavak Island, Kuskokwim Delta Coast. Could pick up some lower flying conditions due to patchy areas of fog, maybe a few flurries. They're bearing straight down towards St. Lawrence Island, uh, but I might be really reaching on that one. And for uh, tomorrow, got a trough here right along the western Alaska range, so look for uh, rain or snow on the eastern slopes there. And of course, uh, precipitation type dependent on the time of day, your elevation, and of course, latitude. And that's going to be all rain here for the North Gulf Coast is that weakening front uh, pulls a fair amount of moisture up. And so, uh, Definitely an increase in the moisture rainfall tomorrow over what you saw today. Rain Kodiak Island, uh, kind of unsettled here across the Panhandle as that front again washes out right across the area. Another one back here to the southwest. And the uh, low center though, southeast of Kodiak, so it's not going to get any big push into the southeast coast. No change up there on the Arctic Coast and North Slope, same pattern you've seen for several days, but it looks like the gradient tightening up here along the western Alaska Range on out to the uh, far western and northwest uh, Arctic coast. Scattered rain and snow showers, isolated scattered Bristol Bay out here along the Alaska Peninsula of the Central Aleutians. Next system trying to push onto the map there, but you see on Sunday it uh, slides off to the southeast and it's not much of a uh, significant weather feature. Otherwise, no change, really light winds here over the southeast bearing into the Aleutians with some scattered isolated rain or snow showers out here caught up in that cool northeasterly flow uh, coming down, persistent now. But we'll also look for some clearing to mix in with that uh, into the Aleutians where showers will be quite isolated and uh, most areas won't see anything at all. Privilas uh, may see a shower or two. Again, clearing out here along the southwest coast, but maybe a few more clouds than what you've had. And then we've got this trough here sneaking into the uh, Seward Peninsula or Norton Sound, Kotzebue Sound area there from the Bering Strait, extending an area of snow right up to the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And with that uh, tightening gradient there, increasing winds, could see some blowing snow there through the passes of the western Brooks Range and along mountains, right on uh, maybe down to Kivalina, depending on how much is available. It doesn't look like you're gonna get a lot of new snowfall. And then that'll clear it out, actually, that offshore flow from about uh, Cape Lisburn up the west side of the Arctic coast. And uh, we've got a dissipating front moving inland, and then it looks like a developing front, frontogenesis occurring here off the southeast coast and off the north Gulf coast. So more rain coming up to the coastline and uh, kind of a cloudy, wet weekend coming up for the panhandle. Looking at lows tonight down there, uh, not too bad, uh, mid-30s to lower 40s. And upper 20s to mid 30s here, southern Alaska, teens, central interior, a little below zero, Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast, and upper 20s for the Pribilofs. Highs tomorrow afternoon, upper 30s for the Aleutians, near freezing for St. Paul and St. George, 20 degrees St. Lawrence Island, single numbers North Slope and the Arctic coast of the Brooks Range, upper 20s here south of the mountains, and then well into the 40s, Tanah Valley on down into uh, 
all the way to the North Gulf Coast and then upper 40s, lower 50s for the Southeast Coast. Lows the following morning, much the same, uh, below zero from the Brooks Range to the Arctic Coast and the zero to 10 below range, 30s to the south and then followed by highs, uh, kind of warming up, 50 to 55 for the Susitna Manuska Valleys. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Saturday morning's flying weather graphic, IFR, central north slope and eastern Arctic coast there. VFR back to the west, pick up the IFR there. Uh, northern Seward Peninsula through the strait, St. Lawrence Island, and better conditions here with some VFR actually over the uh, central part of the Bering Sea and then marginal VFR down to the Aleutians, IFR, eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, and a good zone of IFR here pushing up Kodiak Island right up into Prince William Sound and marginal VFR even farther to the north and inland a ways, southeast coast, mostly marginal. And for the afternoon, improvement down that way with the uh, marginal or VFR expanding out to the coastline here, central and south coast almost, except for Prince of Wales Island coast, and improving up to the north as well, but uh, marginal VFR with IFR now along the eastern slopes of the western Alaska range and uh, still in the western Prince William Sound on down the coast of the Kenai Peninsula, the Kodiak. IFR actually expands up over the north slope and the Arctic coast, and VFR continues here, Bristol Bay, southwest coast, uh, but hugging the Yukon Delta coast, marginal out over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians with some, looks like IFR, probably from Mac Island, Nikolsky. And then for Sunday morning, IFR continues to hold up here, eastern north slope Arctic coast, VFR holding over the eastern interior, zone of marginal conditions up over the western Copper River Basin, Talkeetnas, but south of uh, Windy Pass and IFR now into eastern Bristol Bay, northward almost into the southern Cuscoan Valley, Kodiak Island, Retreating back to the south a little bit here, uh, actually that's another, it's actually moving north again, that's another impulse coming up, and uh, mostly marginal out over the Bering Sea with the IFR off any coast, and uh, let's see, IFR for the southern panhandle, and then for the afternoon, that spreads northward, so we got the uh, southern two-thirds or so, IFR in the southeast coast, north part marginal, marginal VFR about holding here western or Copper River Basin, up toward the Alaska Range and IFR, mostly Cape Gakataga, Montague Island, and uh, southward. And still IFR hanging in uh, Bristol Bay there across the peninsula southwest of Kodiak. Good VFR in the central eastern interior, possibly in the Susitna Valley and Mandanuska Valley as well with uh, VFR here along the coast. And for passes tomorrow, Anatovic and Attigan, both VFR for the Berks Range, Lake Clark and Merrill. VFR becoming marginal VFR uh, probably by late morning into the afternoon with the eastern approaches on both these passes, marginal VFR becoming IFR. And that same trend also for windy VFR uh, quickly becoming marginal and the eastern entrance uh, becoming IFR into the afternoon and evening. And for windy VFR for the most part, uh, marginal VFR I think will actually even be south of the south entrance here. So it's looking pretty good for that pass. And Isabel, some Marginal VFR on the south entrance, otherwise VFR on out the north entrance, and Mentasta, same pattern here. So uh, actually a little bit less uh, marginal VFR than Isabel will have, but still the southern entrance, there's a risk of that. And for Tanita, on the east side, could be some marginal VFR uh, at times throughout the day, otherwise VFR, and Portage, marginal VFR, IFR eastern entrance, and Chilkoot and White, IFR, to start, rapidly becoming, or just look for improvement throughout the day, hopefully to VFR into the afternoon. And for the freezing level, surface 2,000 feet tomorrow morning, right on the north end of uh, the southeast coast, our Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, North Gulf Coast, down along the Alaska Peninsula at the surface, near the Perloff, so above freezing here for the Aleutians, below freezing up to the north. And for icing, uh, moisture coming in, look for uh, isolated moderate at worst here coming into the uh, Prince William Sound area down to Kodiak and up in the long end over the western Alaska range. And this next batch sliding up with that uh, next storm, increasing the icing chances over the southern southeast coast. Jet stream, upper level low here, that next system that will be affecting the southeast coast there. And otherwise, you've got some weak ridging over the eastern interior. Cold upper low here kind of uh, pulling back to the west. 
and at 9,000 feet, couple of low centers here, southwest interior into Bristol Bay. North wind's really not all that strong, 15, 10 to 15 knots north-northeast here over the Bering Sea. A little brisker in the central interior again, uh, 20 to 30 knots, lighter in the Arctic coast, and then big increase in winds there along the panhandle. Same thing at 3,000 feet up to 45 knots, and turbulence, Cajun water chop increasing Prince of Wales Island up to Sitka and over the northwest coast. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. The Space Weather Prediction Center has had a long-standing relationship with the power industry, so they've been aware that solar storms, the geomagnetic storm piece of that, can affect the operation of their systems and induce extra currents and loads on those systems that can either trip those systems offline or, or in the worst of cases, cause damage. That relationship goes back for several decades, in fact. A big incident in 1989 where part of Quebec was tripped offline that affected something like six million customers for about nine hours. I think that really raised the awareness in the power industries. When we get the alert, we watch the grid and start looking for issues. Are we seeing a decline in voltage? Are we seeing equipment failures? And we readjust the system to try to mitigate those problems, try to keep the lights on and keep it from going out. So we're averaging about 500, 550 kilometers per second. If we didn't have this early warning, we wouldn't see it until our sensor saw it getting more information quicker and faster before the storm hits, not during the storm, is a big improvement. In the long term, I think what we need and what we're moving toward the U.S. as a whole is better modeling, fully understanding this phenomenon, understanding how it would impact specific systems. Rather than actually experiencing a storm, we can simulate storms in our software and see what the impact is. We try to get ahead of it. We always plan that if there's an outage, how can we keep the lights on? What's the best process to prevent it? In the end, five, ten years from now, there's going to be a whole mix of operational procedures driven by what we do on prediction and warning. And then there also will probably be some level of hardware controls to ensure the reliability of the grid. Space weather affects technologies. As conditions develop, we put out alerts, warnings, and watches to our customers so they can take action. There's different types of impacts on communication systems. And the HF, we call the high frequency, which is that band of communications, 3 to 30 megahertz. But it's a very important band of radio communication because it's used widespread. It's used, for example, by the airlines. HF radio is most commonly used for position reporting when you're going across the ocean airspace, which is devoid of, of radar. And, and ATC can't see you, so you're, it's up to you to report your position and your altitude and your speed. HF works great most of the time, except during a big flare. And during a big flare, that HF communication capability could be gone within a minute or two. So as soon as we see something happening in there, or we see a flare, it's one of the first things we do is alert the aviation community, hey, big flare, HF's gonna be impacted. Once we know that there's an event going on, then the aviation industry and the airlines can react to that. They can alter their routes over the poles. They can lower the altitudes that they're flying at, or maybe decide not to fly at all in the interest of their passenger safety. So that's just one example of how HF is used, but the emergency response community will use it a lot too. It's one of their primary backups. 
when you've lost connectivity between certain government agencies, it gives you that long range coverage to talk from out of state to federal governments or from the FEMA locations to the state uh, emergency operations centers. So if you've got a big hurricane impact in the coastline, whatever big city, uh, we've got the cell towers down and whatnot, we've got emergency communication folks in there. Those folks are very familiar with space weather and how it impacts their systems. Here in recent years, it was used during Katrina when we had a lot of communications outages down there. It was also used during Hurricane Ike. There was an outage of the telephone circuits with the Texas State Emergency Office, so it was used in both of those situations. So when we talk about backup, especially for the airlines, typically they'll have SATCOM, so it'll be satellite communication. The satellite technology that emergency responders use could be GPSs, could be satellite phones, satellite data terminals. Space weather events can impact SATCOMs. The impact can range from a nuisance to loss of a spacecraft. So we will give them the heads up. If we have space weather events, flares, whatnot, they need to know what's impacting their systems. Situational awareness is key. Time is of essence to these folks. Again, it's life and death. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, today's sea ice analysis just completed, uh, showing uh, increasing here over the uh, areas from St. Lawrence Island, actually a little bit to even the south of St. Lawrence Island, back up into the Bering Strait and north, and uh, to a lesser extent, Norton Sound. And forecast the next uh, four or five days is for a continued southward advance, south and southwest of 40 to 50 or 30 to 40 nautical miles as uh, northerly cooler northerly winds persist through the forecast period. Coastal water forecast here for the southeast coast. Gales, southeast gales on the south coast, 35 knots, seas 18 feet. Easterly gales on the north coast with seas 15 to 17 feet. Light winds for Lynn Canal. Stevens Passage northeast at 15 and southeast coming up to uh, 25 knots for Clarence Strait. And then for Sunday, down below gale force now, but still a pretty stiff breeze south to southeast 30 knots all along the coast, becoming more easterly on the north coast. Seas at about 14 feet. Southeast 25 continue for Clarence Strait and uh, southeast 15 for the northern and central inside waters. Prince William Sound, northeast 20 knots, east 30 knots for the eastern north Gulf Coast and then southwest of Montague Island on down across the Barrens here, south of the Kenai Peninsula, we got northeast 25 and increase that to about 30 knots or Kamishak Bay, north 25, small craft advisories for Southern Cook Inlet, 15 knots north of the Forelands. And that becomes northeast on Sunday here for Northern Cook Inlet, otherwise Southern Cook Inlet, north 20, northeast coming down to 20 knots, Kamishak Bay. Still small craft advisories here for the Barren Islands out of the northeast as well as the uh, western North Gulf Coast at 30 knots and that turns easterly there over toward Middleton Island at 30 knots, Prince William Sound, northeast 15, three-foot seas. Kodiak Island, northeast 25 here along the east side, Shelikoff Strait, north 25. That same wind pattern also, Sipkanak to Castle Cape and then the Alaska Peninsula, not too bad, north at uh, 20 knots, even lighter winds, 15 knots for Bristol Bay. And then on Sunday, uh, lighter winds yet, north 10 knots on the uh, north side of the Alaska Peninsula into Bristol Bay. West 15 here from Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape, Northwest 15 on up to Sitkanak, and Northeast 20 for the greater Kodiak Island area. And for the Eastern Aleutians, North 15 right across on Alaska Island, about the same 15 to 20 knots here as you get over toward Nikolsky, Adak and Atka, North to Northwest 20 knots or 20 knots or less, and North to Northeast at 15, and maybe even less, maybe even 5 to 15 out here over the Western Aleutians. That light wind pattern continues uh, into Sunday here, northeast 10 to 15 here for the western Aleutians. Adak and Atka, uh, northeast 10, really light conditions. In fact, that northeast 10 knot wind pattern extends all the way over to Akun Island. 
And now for the southwest coast, north winds 20 knots. That pattern extends right up to the St. Lawrence Island area, Norton Sound of the Bering Strait, north 15 for the Pervolofs. Outlook for Sunday, uh, northeast 20 here for St. Matthew Island. Bring the uh, small craft advisories back into St. Lawrence Island, northeast 25. Pretty light winds for Norton Sound and north 15 along the southwest coast with seas not too bad, three to four feet, but up to seven feet over the northern Bering. And for the eastern Bouverty Coast, uh, on that eastern zone there, over toward uh, you know, Barter Island to Demarcation Point, east 25 knots, Bruce Wind Advisories there, northeast 20 here for the eastern and central coast. And then Bruce Wind Advisories kick up, especially from Point Lay on down, northeast 25, 30 knot winds from Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, and then lighter northerlies at 20, south of Cape Thompson to the Bering Strait. Then on Sunday, those winds increase. So we got brisk wind advisories out for the entire west side here from Wales all the way up to probably Point Lay. And then 15 knot winds for the central and east side and then edge it back up to 20 knots out of the east as you get over toward the boundary, the eastern boundary. <laughs> anyway, for tonight up in that area, really uh, no change, no significant weather, just that patchy cloud and flurry condition. That's about it, uh, kind of a tightening gradient here and uh, a little bit breezier through the passes of the Western Brooks Range, maybe some flurries and fog possibly, bearing straight to St. Lawrence Island. Fair and light winds and dry over the interior and some uh, rain or snow shower activity here for the eastern Aleutians that kind of pushing south of the central Aleutians. And this front coming up, rain will be spreading northeastward this evening and overnight into the northern areas. And that's also gonna push a possible chance of snow into northern Cook Inlet Manuska, maybe this is sit in the valley, but whatever falls will be light rain for the southeast coast and into Sunday, it looks like that. <laughs> These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank you.